I'm standing right now in um, one quarter of room five at Chimney Rock, and you can see the rest of the wall is this masonry that goes around like this. This uh, pueblo behind me here um, is Chimney Rock. Uh, it's, it's about 7,600 feet, I believe, which is very, very high um, for one of these places. This is a real classic textbook case of a, of a Chaco and outlier, where Chaco Canyon is about 140 kilometers, about 90 miles, something like that, that direction. And uh, Chaco is a capital city, and this is like the county seat, and there are 150, 200 of these dotted all over the southwest. This is the northeasternmost by far of all the Chaco um, outlying great houses, Chaco outliers. Chimney Rock is unique in, in several ways. It's location, 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 location. Um, uh, atop this very, very high sandstone ridge, um, looking out at the, the uh, Chimney Rock and Companion Rock, those twin towers out at the end. It's a marvelous archeological site because of the setting, uh, but also because it was not reoccupied after the end of the Chaco era. Most of the great houses in the Northern Southwest, because there were many uh, from, from here over to Bluff, Utah, where the University of Colorado worked for years at the Bluff Great House. They continued to be used after 1135 and 1120, 1135, when, when Chaco ceases to be the capital. This one is a one-shot deal. So they came out here, they built this thing, and when they left, they left. So it's, it's, we were looking at the pottery last night. It's all at Chaco period stuff. But the design style on that, with the, the, these parallel running bands of crosshatcher, is something that's called Dagoji style after Dagoji Wash in Arizona. And it's characteristic of the pottery in many parts of the Southwest, the Northern Southwest, when chalk was at its height. We have, we have a small team of very talented graduate students from the University of Colorado. And uh, they've been just a great, great crew in terms of getting things done, but it's also a tremendous opportunity for them because this is a famous site. Uh, probably no one will work here again in our lifetimes or their lifetimes. Chaco is a big, a big deal in the, in the Southwest, especially in archaeological archeo communities. And, uh, um, you know, it's really rare that you get a chance to excavate a Chaco and outlier site. So, um, yeah, this is definitely the highlight of my career at this point. And it's actually kind of cool. We had a couple of uh, subfloor features. This right here was uh, some sort of fire hearth. Uh, to be able to work out here, you know, not only is it, you know, the opportunity to work at such a great site like Chimney Rock, but also since I am a Southwest archaeologist and, and I work in the northern San Juan area, you know, just being able to work at this site, sort of, you know, everything worked out great. It's an amazing opportunity to be able to work at the Great House. Work at the Great House has happened uh, two previous times, in the 1920s, in the 1970s, and now. And um, so the next go around may be another 30 years before anybody works in the Great House. So it's a, it's a huge opportunity to be able to excavate here. And Chimney Rock is a unique site, um, just sort of adds to that experience. The site is really exciting to me, actually. I, I got my bachelor's degree at Fort Lewis in Durango, and I always visited here and just thought it was an amazing site just because it's, it's so beautiful and it just seemed really special. I mean, the, the landscape is spectacular, and it's just a really great Chaco and outlier. And it's always intrigued me because we don't know a ton about it. But the, the big surprise was that the room had not been cleaned out prior to abandonment, so there was, in fact, Lots of trash piled up in my side, and in Allison's side of the room, there was uh, there was a whole vessel sunk into the floor. There were a couple other vessels that appeared to have been sitting around the edge of the room, and then the roof came down and, and, and crushed them. Some of the coolest things to come out of this field season were not so much objects, although there were plenty of those, but getting a good look at the architecture, because most of this this uh, ruin has been stabilized, which means it's been glued back together, uh, so it'll keep on standing so people can come see it. There's very few of these walls here that haven't been treated historically, um, but we, we were actually able to see original Chaco and walls exactly the way they built them. This wall and the wall right back here are what we call a butted. So they were added onto this. This wall was here and then they built these walls onto it. So we think that, you know, this wall may have been just a, a nice sort of shelter to, you know, as they were building the rest, expanding the great house. It's, it's, it's in line with my research interests, where, which are in Chaco and it's, um, its influences in the greater Southwest, um, but it's also an incredible experience. I've, I've worked in four continents, and this is one of the most beautiful um, sites and settings and the sort of the most um, gifted and smart crew that I've ever gotten to work with. 